Welcome back. We are here with more of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. This is the Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. It's a happy birthday to Ralph Kiner. National Baseball Hall of Fame put this out. Quote, Ralph Kiner can wipe out your lead with one swing. That's what Warren Spa said many years ago. Well, he was born on this day in 1922, hit 50 home runs twice, and led his team in home runs seven consecutive seasons to start his career, a record that's never been matched. So, Chris, put a price tag on that. If somebody starts their career right now and leads the uh, league in home runs for seven consecutive years, how much money is he worth? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, what did Trout get? I mean, Trout was obviously the best player in baseball, probably his rookie plus, year. Yeah. And his his first extension was $145 million. Then, what, halfway through, they ripped that up and said 400 plus. If you've got a guy that I'm presuming is a good enough hitter to be leading the league in home runs seven straight years, he's probably a pretty good hitter for average all the way around. I don't know. Put an even half billion dollars <laughs> uh, on that one. The craziest thing about Ralph Kiner, of course, is that he was such a marquee attraction for such a bad baseball team at the time. I still – it's surreal in this day and age – it's still surreal to hear people say that, oh, yeah, everyone would just sit for Ralph Kiner's last at bat, and then as soon as he was done hitting or not hitting, everyone streamed to the exits. Can you imagine being every other guy on those Pirates teams that knows that nobody is at the game, maybe other than your own family, to watch you play? Like, that has to kind of stink. Oh, yeah, they're all here for Ralph. They know we're going to get pasted in this game. They just hope he hits one over the fence. What a feeling. That's pretty much what their offense was anyway. It was him or nothing <laughs> in some of those days. All right. We're going to go to the phone lines. We have a lot of calls we want to get in. I want to get into Crosby in a second with you, Chris. But first, let's go out to Carl in Newcastle. Carl, you're first up tonight. What's up? Hey, Carl. How you doing, Bob? Hey, I got a question for who you. Who do you see the Steelers taking in the draft next year for a quarterback? Because <laughs> I don't think Ben's going to be back next year. That's so far down the road, and so many things are involved. It's a fluid situation to the point where I have no idea. Uh, you know, you can say that Kenny Pickett is rising, which he is, but that doesn't mean they're going to be in position to do anything with him. Who knows? I mean, Chris, that's a tough question. There are some really good quarterbacks out there, I think, at least potentially. You know, and, and the rest of the season will determine how they, you know, kind of pan out in next year's draft. That's a hard one to say. You can make the case of Aaron Rodgers, if you want to get into a crazy trade, possibly, yes, maybe. You can also say they believe in Mason Rudolph, or you can say they're going to go elsewhere. It's a veteran or somebody in the draft, and I think all of them are hard to evaluate right now. I think you can pretty safely say they don't believe in Mason Rudolph despite everything that they've said, or else he would have had some other expanded role by now. You just can't have a guy that sits functionally for that long with the exception of one year and, and say you believe in him and have anybody believe you. Mike Tomlin's on the record via Jay Glazer, right? When Jay Glazer speaks, Mike Tomlin, te you know, about Mike Tomlin, it tends to be stuff that he probably heard directly from Tomlin. What does he want next year, allegedly? Veteran quarterback. What is Mike Tomlin three weeks in a row? One, two, three weeks in a row, Bob. What has he talked about? Mobility. Quarterback yeah, mobility. He brought that up yesterday. Conference. He is, of course, because that's his new, that's his new sort of like cause celebre is, hey, I love scouting mobile quarterbacks for possession downs. So who's a veteran who can still scoot out there, even though he doesn't do it as much, that Mike Tomlin would want to bring in? Aaron Rodgers, and if the team has made an in-season trade that uses a first-round pick to get Minka Fitzpatrick, there's absolutely no reason why, in principle, they shouldn't be interested in doing the same for Aaron Rodgers this offseason. That's true, uh, but it also takes two to tango, and Green Bay will have a role in that to play. Also, compensation becomes uh, an issue, and a competitive bidding. There could be a lot of teams that might be interested, and who knows where he may want to go. But I thought you're right about that mobility thing. Aside from what he said about the job vacancies at USC or anywhere else, the fact that he brought up mobility again is very interesting to me. Uh, and, it, and it says a lot about where his mind may be moving after this season. Uh, I want to shift over, uh, Chris, if I can, to Pitt, just because of where they are, what they're... I looked at the line in this game, and I'm a little bit surprised it's as high as it is, only because I think Miami has a capability of making this tough. And if anyone out there thinks Pitt is just going to easily go through this season the rest of the way without any problem situations. I think you're wrong based on Pitt's history, based on what can happen and how crazy it can be, even with teams you don't